Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next tutorial in the Coding Geometry Dash in Java series. In the last tutorial, what we did was we set up collision detection. So if we run this and as the player slides through, it says that he is colliding with those blocks. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is the second half of collision and that is collision resolution. So we will be moving the player, separating the player from the boxes and making sure that he either dies when he hits the side of one of them or he stays on top of it when he hits the top of the block. So without further ado, let's see how this works and then we'll try and code it. This diagram probably looks a little bit familiar because it's very similar to the one in the last video, but we have two scenarios here, one with box one on the left right over here and then one with box one on the right over here. And basically this is just to illustrate how we will be able to uh, use these two different scenarios to our advantage to figure out what is happening, which side collisions are happening and all that stuff. So we already know that these two boxes are colliding because we cannot draw an axis to separate the two of them. But how much are they colliding by and how do we resolve that collusion? How do we move them apart? So we know that the combined half widths of the two boxes are about this long. So we'll just call this w for combined half widths. Now we also know that dx is currently only this long and so this is how much is being collided. So this is dx and what the remaining portion gives us is how much we need to separate them by. So that is the separation amount. So if you were going to do full-on collision resolution what you would do is you would just say width minus dx gives you the collision resolution amount. We will be using this. We won't be using it to resolve the collisions, but this will be helpful because we can also use this in comparison to dy. And if this is less than height minus dy, where height is the combined height, then we know that this is colliding on the horizontal axis. What I mean by that is it's colliding this way. The reason we know this is because if you look at it, if there is more collision, so if dx is smaller, then we know that the box is probably more this way than it is up and down. And then we can use that to our advantage to say, oh, dx must be the horizontal. So it must be colliding on either the left side or the right side. So over here or over here. The next important value that we need is the sine of dx and dy. If it is negative, it would be something like this. It means that the box two has collided on the left side of box one, whereas if it's positive, then we will get a positive value. And that's because we're subtracting box two minus box one, as you remember from the last tutorial. So that will give us a negative number here, which means it's on the left, but it will give us a positive number here since we're going in the right direction, which will give it, which tells us that it's occurring on the right side. And we can do the same thing with the Y values to figure out if it's colliding on the top or the bottom of the box. Now with all these facts in our hands, we can simply use them to our advantage to resolve the collisions, which is what we'll be doing. So remember, we just need to know the width minus dx, the combined widths, and the combined heights minus dy. And then we can use that to tell us which side of the box the collision is happening on. And once we know which side it's happening on, we can resolve the collision or kill the player. Now let's try and code this. First things first, before we can start implementing the collision resolution, what we should probably do is give the player a way to jump so that we can jump over the block. So let's go into the player class and then add a new variable up here called on ground. And this will tell us whether or not the player is currently on the ground. And let's actually initialize this to true. And then this way we'll be able to know when the player can jump when they press the space. Now we'll scroll down and then we're going to add in a new method. So we'll say override public void update double delta time. So this is just going to be our update method. And then inside here we can check whether or not the player is trying to jump. And then if they are, we can, um, or if they're in the air, we can also start rotating them because we know that the player is supposed to be rotating as they fly through the air if you play the original Geometry Dash games. So the first part of this is actually really simple. We'll just say if they're on the ground and window.getwindow.keylistener.iskeypressed uh, key event dot vk space. So if they press the space button and they are on the ground, then we will add a jump force and we'll say this dot on ground is now false because they've just jumped. So there's no way they can be on the ground now. Next, what we'll do is we will implement this add force method. 
which is actually a pretty simple method. So we'll say private void add jump force. And all this method is going to do is it's literally just going to say game object dot get component rigid body dot class dot velocity dot y equals constants dot jump force, which is a force we have not added yet. So this is literally just saying change the y velocity to jump force um, immediately, make them jump from wherever they are. If they're on the ground, they have gravity. It should not be affecting them. So it's fine to just change the velocity instantaneously like this to get the effect we want. So let's go to our constants class and add in this jump force constants. So we'll say public static final int jump force and negative 650 is a good value. This will give us the appropriate uh, parameters so that player, and I'm actually going to change this to a float too, so that the player can jump three blocks in the horizontal direction every time they jump. Uh, let's go back to the player class now. So now we know how to let the player jump if they're on the ground, but how do we make the player rotate if they're not on the ground? Well, that's really simple too. So if they're not on the ground, then we'll just say game object dot transform dot rotation plus equals, and then I'm going to give it 150.0f times dt. So we're just saying rotate it, and then the times dt just makes it so that uh, if you have a varying frame rate, it will be smooth no matter what. You'll be going the same distance, and it won't be weird, fast, and then slow rotation. Now we're going to have to add an else clause, because what if they land kind of cockeyed, like a little bit 45 degree angle or something? We want it to snap so that it's perfect. And so we can do that by saying else. So they are on the ground in this case. Say so game object dot transform dot rotation equals, and I'll say int game object dot transform dot rotation mod 360. 360. <laughs> so what this is going to do, it's going to snap it so that the rotation is between zero and 360 degrees. Then we're going to say if the game objects transforms rotation is greater than 180 and it is less than 360, which means we're somewhere in between that 180, 360 line, then we'll just make it zero. And then we'll say the same thing if else if the rotation is greater than zero or or actually and the rotation is less than 180, then we will also just snap it to zero. So this will just make it so that the player snaps to zero whenever they're falling. So if we run this, we should be able to now fall and then we can jump and it starts spinning, but it doesn't stop spinning because we never go back on the ground. And that's actually spinning just a little bit too fast. So I'm gonna change this to like 50 times DT. We'll see how that looks real quick. So I changed it to 10 and that seems to be a pretty good amount. Uh, next thing we're going to have to do is make it so that they are on the ground once they actually hit the ground again. So let's figure out how to do that real quick. So let's go to our ground component and then inside here is where we check and see if the players hit the ground. So if the players hit the ground, we can very simply just say player dot get component player class and then dot on ground equals true. So now if we hit the ground, we should be able to jump several times so it stops rotating and then we are able to jump again and again so that's pretty good now we have jumping that's the first step now next step is to actually start resolving the collisions before we do that let's add one more method to the player and this will be called die <laughs> so public void die and we will call this every time we just want the player to die uh, we'll say game object dot transform dot position dot x equals zero and then game object dot transform dot position dot y equals like 30. And then we will also say window dot get window dot camera or dot get current scene dot camera dot position dot x equals zero. So we're just moving the player back to the beginning and moving the camera back to the beginning. And that should reset the level, so to speak, so that we can just start going forwards in the level again. Now let's go to our box bounds and start implementing the collision resolution. Before we can do that, we have to go into bounds though and implement our little collision resolution function here. So we'll say public static void resolve collision and we'll give it a bounds B and a game object player. There we go. And then we're gonna say if B dot type equals bounds type dot box, which means that we have a box versus box collision resolution. We'll say box bounds box equals and then cast 
B to a box bounds, and then we'll say box dot resolve collision player. And so this is a function we haven't implemented yet, but we are going to right now. So we'll go into box bounds, and we will add in a public void resolve collision, and it's going to take in a game object player. Now inside here, we're going to need a couple of things. So first, let's get the player bounds. So we'll say player bounds, or actually we'll say bounds, box bounds player bounds equals player dot get component and I'll say box bounds dot class. This will give us the player bounds and then we're going to need basically the exact same things here. So we're going to do all this, just copy it. And then instead B1 and B2 will say player bounds and the this. So I'm going to replace all of B2 with this and all of B1 with player bounds. So we'll just replace all of those and that should give us the initial values that we need. Now what we want is the collision resolution amount or the overlap in the X direction and the overlap in the Y direction. So if we go right down here, then we can say float overlap X equals the combined half widths minus DX. And then we'll say, and actually that should be the absolute value of DX so that we get that as just a number, a positive number. Let's say float overlap y equals combined half heights minus math to absolute value of dy. So this gives us those overlaps I was talking about in the drawing. Then we can say if the overlap in the x direction is greater than or equal to the overlap in the y direction, then if dy is greater than zero, we have a collision on the top of the player. So remember how I was saying the top of the player. How I was saying uh, the overlaps will tell us which or which axis, so we're saying overlap X is greater than overlap Y, which means we have the collision in vertical, and then since DY is greater than zero, we know it's happening on the top of the player, since the player is acting as box one in this scenario. So what happens if it's a collision on the top of the player? We'll just say player.transform.position.y equals the game object.transform.position.y minus the player bounds dot get height. So we're just saying move it so that the player is sitting right on top of this box. Then we can say player dot get component rigid body dot class dot velocity dot y equals zero. So we reset the velocity because we've just hit the ground. We don't want to keep falling. And this will just help that out a little bit, get rid of some of the jitteriness. Let's say player dot get component player dot class dot on ground equals true because we are on the ground again. So we want the player to be able to jump again if they want to. Else, if the player hits the top of the box, I'm just gonna, or this hits the bottom of the player, then I'm just gonna say player dot get component player dot class dot die. And I'm also just gonna comment this too on the bottom of the player, just so that we know if we're looking at this in the future and we need to know what exactly is happening. Else we have a collision on the left or the right of the player. So we can say if dx is less than zero and dy is less than or equal to 0 0.3. What I'm doing here is I'm saying if it's a very small collision vertically, we just want to bump the player up because that's also a feature in Geometry Dash. So we're going to stick to the actual game and have it work the same way. Then we'll say um, exactly the same things as this. We will just move the player up and we will say that he's on the ground again. Otherwise, we don't care. We'll just say player.getComponent, player.class, dot die. And then the player should die. So with all this in place, we should be good. Let's see if this is resolved now. It says that cannot solve. Oh, we should put that as actually player, okay. And then let's go into our level scene real quick. And instead of just printing out that they are colliding, we can say b.resolve collision. And then we will give it, actually we should say bounds.resolve collision. And then we'll give it b and player. And that should resolve the collision. So let's see what happens when we run this. I hit the boxes, I reset. And then if I hit the top of them, I'm able to keep going. Let's add a little bit more to our level just to see if we have everything working properly. 
So I'm going to go just like one, two, three, and he should be able to jump three in any direction. Well, just to the right, I guess, right? And then we'll do just a few up here just to test and see that you can jump on top of that. So hit F1, then F3. And you can see that we basically have Geometry Dash working, but there is one thing I want to highlight. Uh, check out this, which should definitely not be happening. So if we fall, and then I can jump in the midair. That's not good. We don't want that to happen because that's not how the game is supposed to work. So what's happening there is we've told the player that he's on the ground since he was on the boxes, but once he starts falling, there's no way to know for sure that he's not touching anything anymore. So instead of updating the player in here with all the other game objects, what I'm going to do is go up here and then I'm going to remove this add game object player. And instead of doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to say render.submit player. And then we're going to update the player manually down inside the loop. So right before we do the loop, we will say player dot um, update delta time then we will say player dot get component player dot class dot on ground is false and then inside here we can actually remove the if g does not equal player now too because he will no longer be updated inside here but now um what's basically going to happen is we're going to update the player so we update his state then we say okay the player's not on the ground we don't know if he is or not then it loops through every single object in the scene. If one of those objects is the ground and the player is touching that ground, it will set this to true. If one of these objects is a box and the player is just so happens to be touching a box, it will set on ground to true. Then we loop, when we loop back around and we come back up to the top, we will be able to jump. But if he is no longer touching anything, then it will never trigger that. And then the player will just remain in that state where he cannot jump. So let's test this. If we jump, we can jump still. And if I try to jump outside of there, it doesn't let me jump. But we have jumping completely working other than that. So this is basically collision resolution. We have the first part done. I hope you guys like this. Um, I think in the next tutorial, what we're going to be starting to go over is probably the backgrounds because that really just brings it to life. Once we have the blue color and the backgrounds in place, it's really going to start feeling like Geometry Dash. We're so close. And then after that, we're probably going to go into triangle collision detection, everything too, which is a lot more complicated, but it's a fun subject and it's fun to dive in and see how all the math works and everything. So I hope you guys like this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Thanks. See you.